Hello everyone. Let us start with the first module of this course. The first module is a very basic module so as to orient you about the microbial world. For all those who do not know much about microorganisms, this is especially for you. In this week, we are going to be focusing on what basically do you mean by microorganisms? What are the different types of microorganisms? Are all of them really dangerous? Or are they even beneficial? Where do we find them? And if they are really dangerous, how dangerous can they be? All this we will cover in this week. Let us first begin with a very basic question. The question of what are microorganisms? Very simple. Split the term into two words, micro and organisms. That makes the complete sense of it. Micro, this basically stands for small or tiny. Organisms, this is something that we all know about. So microorganisms are tiny living beings, small living beings. But you know, when you say small, how small are they? This should be a very important question and we will discuss about this shortly. Microorganisms basically are very tiny living beings which are not visible to the naked eye. And before we go ahead to speak about the size of these organisms, let us first revise very basic terminologies which we even learnt in our school days. We know that organisms basically are classified into two types. I don't know if you remember about those two types or not. These two types that we are speaking about is prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Let us see an image of the same. Prokaryotes are primitive organisms. They are primitive in terms of their cell structure, cell composition. They do not have a well-defined nucleus. While well, eukaryotic cells are those which are modified versions. They have a well-defined nucleus, membrane-bound organelles. Let's not get into those technicalities. Just we have to remember that prokaryotes are primitive versions of cells. Eukaryotes are modified or adapted versions of these cells. We humans, animals, plants, we all are eukaryotic organisms. While bacteria are the best example for prokaryotic organism. Why are we even talking about these? We are talking about this because in microorganisms, you have both kinds of cells. Some microorganisms are prokaryotic, some microorganisms are eukaryotic. Don't worry about the technicalities of the same because it's just an introduction to these terms that you need to be aware about. Another two set of terms is something that I'm very sure you have heard of. Unicellular and multicellular. Uni stands for single. So an organism which is made up of a single cell, basically a one-man army. That is what unicellular organisms is all about. Best example for this would be amoeba. I'm sure that amoeba is something that we all have learned from school days. That ghost-like organism, which is irregularly shaped, is a unicellular organism. Multicellular, multi stands for multiple cells. We are the best examples. Trillions of cells makes up a human. So we are not a one-man army here. There are so many cells in the background which are working constantly to keep us alive. In microorganisms, again, we have few which are unicellular, few which are multicellular. We will look at this as we go ahead. Now let us move to that question about cell and scale. Imagine a needle which you use for stitching purposes. The pinpoint tip of that needle is somewhere in the size range of 1 millimeter to 3 millimeter. Now imagine about microorganisms. 
which are 1000 to 10,000 times smaller than the pinpoint tip of the needle. Imagine, the tip of the needle itself is so tiny to see that it puts strain on our eyes most of the times. And we are here talking about organisms which are 1000 to 10,000 times or even more smaller than that pinpoint tip of the needle. So if you go, if you have a look at this scale from right to the left, you will see that frog egg is around one millimeter. Then comes human egg, pollen grains which are found on the flower. Then smaller than that is a normal animal cell or a plant cell. Smaller than that are RBCs, red blood cells which make up our blood. Smaller than that is bacteria and even smaller than that are viruses. So viruses go somewhere in the nanometer scale so tiny that you can't even you know, visualize it using a normal microscope. To give you an idea of what we are talking about, have a look at this table. We are talking about sizes that do not range in meters, decimeters or centimeters or even millimeter. We are talking about size ranges in micrometers, which is like 10 raised to minus 6 meters or nanometer, which ranges like 10 raised to minus 9 meters. So you can imagine how minute these organisms are. So we should be very thankful to all those scientists who invested their time and effort in developing a very significant instrument, which today we refer to as a microscope. I'm sure in your school days or even in college, you would have seen organisms under this microscope, which is the simplest of, you know, the microscopes that any academic institution has, which is called a compound microscope. But let me tell you that when you look at bacteria, even using a compound microscope, they look very tiny. So if you want to look at them in a much more magnified image, then you have to go for higher magnification, higher resolution based microscopes. Viruses may be practically impossible to visualize using a compound microscope. So with advancement in science and technology, we now have a variety of, you know, higher end microscopes like fluorescence microscope, electron microscope, which makes it possible to even look at the finer details of these tiny living beings. All thanks to electron microscope, that we are now able to visualize the structure of even viruses that cannot be seen using a compound microscope. To just give you an experience of what kind of difference you get when you see something under a compound microscope and you know the same thing under an electron microscope, I'm going to show you an image and I hope you really enjoy and appreciate that how microscopy works. Have a look at this slide. On your left hand side is a bacteria called Bacillus, which was observed under compound microscope. You can see how tiny rod like structures they are. And when you look at the same bacteria under an electron microscope, look at the size and the magnification, the resolution of the image that you can see. This is the magic that an electron microscope gets, which has made it possible for us to understand microorganisms in more finer details. So in this video, we discussed about what basically microorganisms are all about. We tried to understand that what size range these organisms belong to in terms of the size scale. And finally, we also saw how do we visualize microorganisms. In the next video, we will try and understand the types of microorganisms at least the basic types in more details. Stay tuned.